We want to talk about capital gain and its implications. First, the capital structure of a company has a significant effect on the financial stability and the future success of a company in the long term. So for capital gain, we're talking about the long term, uh, it measures the relationship between the long term borrowing and uh, the, borrowing, the long term borrowing of a company and its equity. Therefore, we can say capital, uh, capital gearing is the fixed cost capital divided by the total capital employed into the business. So, how do we get that? So, here they said uh, the ratio for capital gearing is gearing percentage, which is the fixed cost capital. When we talk about fixed cost capital, we're talking about debentures, we're talking about debentures, long term loans, or prevent shares. Because these ones have fixed uh, debentures, for example, debentures, it has a fixed interest rate. We have um, prevent shares, which has a fixed dividend that has to be paid to each shareholders. So these are fixed cost capital. Then we have the total capital employed, which comprises the equity. And when you talk about the equity of a business, we're talking about the reserves, we're talking about prevent shares, we're talking about ordinary shares, we're talking about long-term loans and we're talking about debentures. Put the summary of all, or the sum of debentures, long-term loans, prevent shares, ordinary shares, and all reserves brings up our capital employed. So with, uh, that means the fixed cost capital, which is the dividend, uh, which is the prevent shares and long-term loans all debentures divided by the total capital employed it gives us our gearing percentage you multiply it by 100 so what are the implications of this so when we talk about the implications we're talking about what to, what we have to do as a business when we have to increase our gearing ratio or when we have to reduce our gearing ratio so for to increase our gearing ratio to increase or to decrease the gearing ratio it is decided by the company's director so for us to increase our gearing ratio what do we have to do as a business? So, the first thing we have to do as a business if we have to increase our gearing ratio is to increase our debentures. So if we increase our debentures, that means we are having more debt to pay as a business. Another one to do is, one is to increase our debenture. Another one is to increase, uh, to issue more prevent shares. Because if we issue more prevent shares, we're going to incur more debt. And the third one is to redeem our shares. And that's what we're talking about. When we talk about share redemption. And for share redemption, it means we have to pay from our reserves. That reduces the amount of reserves we have. We have to pay from our reserves to those shareholders that we, have, we already have agreement with to buy back our shares. So that also increases our gearing. But to reduce our, uh, to reduce our gearing ratio, one, we have to issue new shares, which means we have to issue more ordinary shares. Also, we have to retain profits rather than paying dividends. That's another way to reduce our gearing ratio. And the last one is to redeem our debentures. So we stop paying for debentures. We pay up our debentures. So these are the ways in which we can increase or reduce gearing ratio. And also for the gearing ratio, we have a question here, which comprises, uh, which, compa uh, which, which compares uh, two companies, LGPLC and HGPLC. Here they said HBPLC, uh, LGPLC has 12.5% debentures and HPPLC has 12.5% uh, debentures of 50 million. LG, HG has 310 debentures. For the prevent shares, they have 1390 Ordinary shares of 500 and 100 Retain earnings of 200 and 250, general reserves of HGRs 50, and foreign exchange, exchange reserve is 250. So, for the gearing ratio, it is fixed cost capital debt, which is capital divided by the total capital employed, which is debt plus equity. So, for, L, for fixed cost capital, it is debenture plus prevent shares. And for total capital employed, it will be debentures plus prevent shares plus ordinary shares plus retained earnings plus general reserve plus foreign exchange reserve. The multiply by 100 gives us our gearing ratio. That is how we calculate for our gearing ratio. Thank you.